I, I think um, the, the consequences of the telematic uh, infrastructure that is being built mean that one is regularly, constantly, routinely downloading into that system. One is regularly, consistently putting one's consciousness out into data space. Um, I think there can be a confusion in this idea of downloading from the wetware to the hardware if the hardware is seen as it often popularly is as an object, as like a little box or you know, a computer in the sense of something you put on the table. And that concept is quite horrific and frightening and horrible and actually rather stupid, I think. Because computer-mediated systems, artificial memory, artificial perception, and telepresence mean that any downloading that takes place now is a matter of distributing mind. And an ultimate downloading in the sense that I take Moravec to be talking about, of all that's in the wetware into that network, could only be an epiphany of mind because it would mean a total distribution of the mind throughout those networks accompanied by a distribution of presence. And that seems to me to be um, an exciting prospect, uh, actually a very human prospect. It's the product of our absolute desire to connect. Um, it was Gregory Bateson, you remember, who you may, re you may know, who created the phrase mind at large. I think that was a very potent expression, mind at large. This, um, it's much more than a Jungian kind of sea of the uh, unconscious. It's, it is a, an interaction of minds within a data space. So I think this is the, the consequence of a downloading would be that all that constitutes the unified mind, if we're going to continue with the idea of mind being unified and being contained in this cranium and being a unitary um, system or a unitary isolated entity, if, if we continue with that metaphor, which is a fairly ancient metaphor, we have, but not that ancient, you know, um, then if we continue with that, then yes, to download all of that and distribute it would be, would be wonderful. But I think the implications of the idea of downloading of mind from wetware to hardware really are elevating a very, very ancient idea, which I find expressed, for example, even now in Aboriginal, Australian Aboriginal culture of mind at large. That, that, that mind is, as it were, not to be located, and certainly not to be located in the individual, that the individual is part of mind. The individual organism is part of what be called, could be called mind, not that the mind is part of an individual. Mind is there are consequences of that. For example, one reads it out in Aboriginal art, where their art is always very, very layered, is always about that kind of bird's eye view of the world, a kind of swooping and swerving through events, seeing connections, which are much more than the unitary viewing that we associate with, say, Renaissance art. And I mean, I'm, I'm citing art not because I'm an artist, simply because art is simply a very privileged way of expressing naturally a common consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, the, the debate about what constitutes mind in any case is really back of any question of downloading mind from wetware to hardware. But the very existence of the so-called hardware of these telematic networks, of these computer-mediated systems, is that we are reconsidering the definition of mind and possibly relocating mind so that it's not within the, unit, in, in, within the unitary individual, but the unitary individual is within mind at large. There's a sort of reversal in that respect.